So I'm like, oh, you're going to die. This is Kenton Claremont from Train to Hunt, and you're watching the Great Ebalman. Call, calling you fat and the macronutrient fat. fat. That's we right. We should have called it, like, oil. We should have called it awesome. Yeah. <laughs> when did you know you really liked Cameron? We became buddies, like, immediately. Like, Once right off the bat? Friends. Yeah. Well, 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 I had him on my podcast. the first time I met him, and he mm-hmm. brought me a, a Hoyt bow, so how could I not love him? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I did. <laughs> what did you think when, when that happened? I thought... I made it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I yeah. thought I finally made it. Let's get it. It's not. Let's, I am not let's, joking. Let's. Yeah. I do not talk with my hands. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I do not <laughs> with my hands. My hands. What? I just Randy Black not Eagle. Randy that's Black it. Eagle. Boom. That's that's my. That's how we roll. Just drop the mic and walk away. <laughs> we get almost to where we want to call, and crash, crash, crash. And I'm like, no, not this morning, last day. <laughs> we might be okay, right? I mean, all of a sudden I went from like one <laughs> to like eight or ten, right? I'm right. like, yeah. the compound, I have total confidence. With this thing, I'm like, hey, yeah, maybe. <laughs> you missed that mule deer. We made that public, and that's... Oh, no, no BS aside. No matter how much I try to not let it bother me, there is pressure. Brian's filming all this with the gritty bowman going to trad bow and then you got all the guys following that want to see you succeed and then you've got the haters that want to see you fail <laughs> by the time i shot brian's laying I'm on the ground i'm flat because i and, got the phelps tube which is like a human and, being in itself in its size and all i was looking at was the tip of aaron's arrow <laughs> and it was like this and this and then it was kind of shaking and then it went boom solid like a rock and i'm like oh 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 <laughs> He's like, I get to know if you hit anything or not. You never really show excitement because I don't. I just, I'm yeah. kind of always mellow. And this thing, it's ready to jerk a tear. I was running around like an idiot. <laughs> like, All right, everybody, welcome to the Gritty Bowman live on the side of the mountain. It, uh, I'm still a little shell shocked this all happened, so I'm not my normal witty self. But <laughs> man, it is the last morning we had to. We're gonna go back today around 10:11. Pack up our stuff. Go to the truck, heads down, if we didn't get it done. Brian, he was like, last night, you know, we sat in a tree stand, froze our butts off. And Brian said, we can get it done in the morning. And we knew this bull was here. And uh, try not to jump around a bit. Brian called this bull in well within range, except I was on the wrong side when the bull came in a week ago. Yeah. Got video of it. Yep. And I didn't think it was the herd bull. I'm like, that's not the herd bull. He's not big enough. And I'm... Don't get me wrong. Super proud of him. I would have shot a calf this morning, but I was like... <laughs> three-legged calf. Yeah, three-legged calf. I was like, he's not the herd bull. He's he's just, you know, he's a decent age five-by-five, five, but he's not the herd bull. So anyway, we've come on this mountain two or three different times, got close, never got it done. So we're like, last day, let's head up and get it done. So we're creeping in this morning, trying to figure out, make sure where we're at. We get almost to where we want to call and crash, crash, crash. And I'm like, no, not this morning, last day. And uh, yeah, I was feeling a little dejected at that moment. Like, oh man, because they were only like 50 yards, 60 yards from us. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. they were close. And it was just daylight, you know. And 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 they were right on the crest of a a ridge, and we were coming on through this flat. And they just, I just saw elk scatter. This is the downslope of we were just about to pull up to there yeah, where the bull we're died right now we were back that way ways. yeah and uh so i creep forward and uh you know i look and i can see this bull down here and i'm like well hell he doesn't know we're here yeah and i i just kept when they scattered i just started cow calling. calling and bugling a little bit kind of gentle and you can hear cows calling you can yeah, yeah you can yeah. hear cow calls and i told aaron i'm like well, I came back to Brian. Yeah. And you, you're, you came back. Yeah, I saw you with your binoculars, and you come back to me, and you're like, he's just sitting right over there. And I'm like, <laughs> he goes, they all went. And I'm like, well, I saw cows go over there. So in my mind at that point, I'm like, we split the cows, and he didn't run away. We might be okay, right? I mean, all of a sudden, I went from like one to like eight or ten, right? I'm right. Like, I thought he had gone three canyons over. And I was like, and Aaron's like, no, he's over there. I mean, literally, I was that like, I'm like, he's just down there, right? So we're creeping forward, and I see you, a cow. Well, and you said, I'm like, what do we do? What should we sit yeah. here and call? What do we do? And you're like, and you're like, 
Let's and just I, go over there. I'm super <laughs> aggressive in everything in life. And I'm like, let's just go up there. So we're creeping. And in keeping in mind, <sighs> Brian tries to keep me calm. And I give him crap about being too calm. And there's a cow right below us. And I'm like, we're standing like two, three feet apart now. And I'm, I, I lower down. I'm like, there's a cow 20 yards from us. And it blows out. And, and I'm like. And I wasn't running the camera either because I was like, I, we had just picked up. This all happened really fast. It's, it happened so fast. And I didn't turn the camera on. And I, and I was also thinking to myself, as we started walking over, I'm like, we're making so much noise. It's loud I'm here. Like, it's dry. It's never going to work. Yeah. It's never going to work because yeah. we're in those. It was so loud. But I, we creep up. And when you said there's a cow there, I'm like, that's like 20 yards. Like yeah. We are right on top of that cow. We, we lowered down. And I'm like. And there's a log, a big log in front of us that's about three feet tall. And there's a lot of branches like this size, crisscrossed on the log. And the cow ran off and I was like, just bugle. And I couldn't see the bull, but I'm assuming the bull's still there. And I figured, give him like the meanest, gnarliest bugle there is at this point. What do we got to lose? Yep, and he did. He's, Rah! and he started coming. I'm like, he's coming. Get down, get down. <laughs> and instantly I heard him crashing. I mean, and he's then, running in full speed. And then I saw his antlers and I'm like, Bruh! again? And he just keeps coming. And I can see his head's about to pop into view. So I'm getting lower and say, lower. Brian's, by the time I shot, Brian's laying <laughs> on the ground. I'm flat because I and, got the Phelps tube, which is like a human and, being in itself, in its size. <laughs> and I'm like on my knees. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm clear. I'm clear. And I'm watching. I'm trying to find a freaking hole to shoot through. I and think you're slug. about uh, four or five feet in front of me. Yeah. Dip down a little lower, and I, I see you draw over the log, and there's branches crisscrossing all through the log, and I see your arrow tip, and you're at full draw for quite a bit, like trying to find a hole. Yeah, I was trying. And I'm laying there going, this is happening. This is happening, <laughs> and I can see the antler tips. Well, and so what and was, he's looking at me. Is he's coming. I'm thinking I got to find a hole and hope he crosses in front of it. And you bugled again. Yeah, and we're on a hill like this. Yeah. And that bull is coming in. And I, when I scream at him the last time, he had to be looking at the hill going, where the heck is this bull? And he was pissed. I could see he was going, hoo, hoo. and I was looking and he stopped. And that's when I lock, I'm like, I've got a hole right there. And I locked it. He was 12 yards away. And I actually shot him corner in two. Um, too perfect and i put it right here and it they dropped him i mean when it hit it sunk i'm shooting those cutthroats yeah. in about a 614 grain arrow of a vintage black eagle not doing a sales pitch but to give you an idea of the the setup and it just wham and it hammered him and he dropped and for a second i saw the arrow go off and i'm like and i hear I, i'm i can't see now i just see the antlers hit just, yeah. just disappear <laughs> out of my view just disappear and he goes down like i'm like oh my gosh he just dropped and i thought you might have spined him i wasn't sure what happened well i've taken that shot a bunch with a with a with a compound and uh and i told myself anywhere in that eight to twelve yard range i would take that shot with a stick bow well i felt really good this morning that mule deer i shot a mule deer away and that really like boosted the confidence even though i shot that at five feet and I'm like, and I when I locked in, I was like, I looked at the my arrow tip because I shoot point on at a certain distance. And I shoot instinctive. Well, this morning I looked at my sight window and it felt good. And I looked at my point on and it was down by his knees. I'm like, that's it. Boom. And when it hit, I watched it bury. There was only like that much. In fact, the arrow was over there. There was only like that much fletch sticking out. So I knew I hit everything vital and it dropped. And it actually, there was, it, it was bleeding pretty good yeah. but i also severed some tissue where he he wasn't he wasn't his body wasn't working very well so oh he's done i took he off like he couldn't an, move no he couldn't yeah i took off like an idiot because i'm like don't be the crippler snyder get on him and i'm like my you know big butt brian film me running through the woods like an idiot i turned the camera him. on it finally and now was, that i'm off my back the camera was up on the hill behind me because we just hit the ground so fast because he was coming, so I, I couldn't turn it on. And he was trying to do a death run down the hill, and I put another arrow into him when he was running just to be sure. And then just to then he hit the ground, off. and then I got finally got the camera on you. And Oh, 
Oh my gosh, Niger. Oh my gosh. Oh. Oh. You did it, dude. Oh. Oh. Is he going down? Is he done? He had three arrows in his heart cavity there. Yeah, I put another one in him just to be sure total. So either way, I, do, I couldn't even hardly talk because we have done everything. And it's not just like 10 days of hunting with no elk. It's 10 days of hunting with a lot of screw-ups, right? I, I mean, not just screw-ups, wind changing, sitting. We, set, we have stands set up that we set up in July that we know elk are hitting. For five hours we sat, nothing came in. And then had like a bull that's bigger than this bull here, but probably a 330, 340 bull, 28 yards for two to three minutes looking at me. Couldn't shoot. I didn't want to take a frontal at that distance. Man, there's what else has happened? I mean, everything's happened. The bull you wounded. Yeah, I wounded a bull. Blood. I shot from that opening back there. It was a fairly close shot. It was like 28 to 30. And I thought I hit him in the stomach, but honestly, by this, I mean, that's a lot of muscle blood. So what I'm wondering is when this snapped off where I thought I hit him, if I was just seeing the arrow snap off. I don't know. I'm gonna kind of follow along and see how much he's bleeding here. I tracked him all the way up earlier. And you couldn't make this crap up if you tried. Just following 60 yards behind him, just waiting for him to bed, come back and grab Brian. He bedded down with like 20. Did you know you were behind him? No, dude, it was perfect. Look at look at what I had to stock him in. Yeah. I followed him up for a half a mile. He bedded down with 20 other bulls. I couldn't tell which one he was. There was, I don't know how many elk were up there, but there was elk everywhere. So I'm sitting there in front of 20 different bulls with no idea which one this bull is. And just sitting there waiting and waiting. Finally, I see one kind of bobbing his head and I'm like, that's gotta be him. I'm like, I'll just sit here and wait. When they stand up, I'll shoot him just to confirm. Well, the wind switched and it was like chaos. Elk were running everywhere. This is depressing, seriously depressing. Yeah, let's go see if this thing's bleeding much. And uh, we tracked him forever, and he was just a muscle hit. And uh, the thing is, I, I just picked up this this recurve, and it has been a humbling experience because <laughs> pretty much just hit what I'm aiming at with the compound. Not like a bragging thing, but elk come in, and I shoot him, and then I'm like, I'm going to go help my buddy. And that's kind of it. Where with this, there is so much you have to pay attention to. It's not like, oh, I hit the drop stop. Oh, let me go to my anchor point. Oh, there's a peep sight and a pin. It's like, am I at the same draw? I'm grabbing my pants. I'm at an angle. <laughs> you know, it's like all this stuff going on. And anyway. It's a challenge. It's a whole love, love, another level of challenge. I mean, repeatedly, we, as we've gone on this hunt, you could have killed multiple elk with a compound. Pro probably 15 bulls varying from three points. And that's no joke. Yeah, that's no not joke. an exaggeration. I stalked in when I was tracking that one to 18 to 20 bulls various different sizes up to bigger than this one and that one he called in that third night was about this size yeah that was huge we had a huge bull at 68 or 70 some yards across this willow huge Be bull broadside bugling at brian could have shot him he just bugled for like five minutes and then went in the willows and that's when you charged him. i charged i got the 18 yards from him in the willows and i just got stuck in the willows i couldn't see him and we're doing everything that we know how. And I mean, I'm trying to be more calm because the whole aggressive mentality does not work well with a stick bow. I can't charge in guns blazing, scream, and the bull come into 50 screaming and me shoot it. I have to kind of like ease on in and be real mellow and sneaky because I can only shoot about 20 yards <laughs> of this thing. So, and this, I can't believe, I mean, 
There's a lot of things I can't believe. <laughs> but, and I'm hardly ever excited or speechless. And I tell you, because he's like, I couldn't tell if you shot anything. This was the other day. He's like, he heard my bow go off when I missed that mule deer. And he's like, I got to know if you hit anything or not. You never really show excitement. Because I don't. I just, I'm yeah. kind of always mellow. And this thing, you're ready to jerk a tear. I was running around like an idiot. Because <laughs> it's just so much more work. I Man, can't, I when can't you hit enough. that bull and we came over the, because this morning, Aaron, I woke up in the tent and it's real like pretty Aaron, cold. Aaron had been up for a while. I actually woke up in the night because it was so cold last night. And it was in the I low twenties, everything was frozen. I was just freezing, and so I put that Kafaru parka on, and then climbed back inside my sleeping <laughs> bag, <laughs> and I finally fell asleep for a few hours. And when I woke up, Aaron was up, and he had his red head lamp on, and he was just listening to some mellow music <laughs> i had spotify on what did i what did i have on i, I had passenger on i think i was listening to passenger yeah, or maybe bob dylan just kind of sitting there and uh so i'm like usually you're like blah 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 blah, 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 blah when we wake <laughs> up in the morning like you're chattery and stuff and you were just like quiet the whole morning and i'm like oh yeah it's a heavy day the, we still have today i had the mental game on this morning because yeah it's there's a lot of you know no no bs aside no matter how much i try to not let it bother me there is pressure brian's filming all this with the gritty bowman going to trad bow and then you got all the guys following that want to see you succeed and then you've got the haters that want to see you fail and we've had all these emo well emotional an, highs and lows i it, mean it's an emotional experience i think hunting in general oh yeah and then when you throw make it such a public spectacle which was what we've done well, we wanted that people to see a, a guy that has killed some stuff. Me, yeah. I've killed. I mean, I'm not a great trophy hunter, but I've killed quite a bit of stuff. You missed that mule deer. We made that public, and that's oh lord, <laughs> that got shared everywhere. And and it's what's funny is I know tons of guys that miss. Like I had a bunch of people like I missed five times yesterday, you know. But nobody ever posts that. The truth, and, yeah. and Brian posts things exactly like they happen, and which. In the case of the deer, was I was the brunt end of that joke because I like went half Winchester on this well, and freaking mule deer. To give you credit, though, I mean, you let me post it and share it just the way it happened. <laughs> but there's a lot of four-letter words in that. It's the tried life. Yeah. Honestly, I'm a little upset. My image of you has been shattered. Well, I want people, I get pretty irritated at the industry sometimes of how fake it can be. It's not, you know. This real, is hard. It is hard. It can be really hard with a recurve in your hand. Not everything, but there's a lot of emotional highs and lows. It's not just shooting, gripping, and grinning. In this case, we're on a backpack hunt. Had really bad weather the first trip. Like emotionally, snow and rain all day. When uh, I came to Colorado... I didn't know I'd be hunting the Swiss Alps. Snyder. It's snowing a little bit. <laughs> Jeez. It hasn't really given us a break since we've started. It's been no, pretty crappy. I feel like day. I've been wet the whole time and we didn't bring the stove. Well, it's pretty much uh, done this since I got to Colorado, it seems like. So, uh, hunkered down. Got the camera gear under the shelter. Trying to find something under a tree. Aaron's down the hill, about 100 yards. We're hoping to call in some elk, but I think we're just hunkered down for the next half hour or so until this Colorado hail stops. Camp update. Um, it rains and snows more in Colorado officially than it does in Oregon. And as you can see, everything is soaking wet and we're trying to dry it out. I, uh, my boots got all wet yesterday. They soaked in from the top down, from the socks, and I was like, oh, it's supposed to be sunny tomorrow. Let's let them dry out. Well, today is tomorrow, <laughs> and it didn't dry out. No. <laughs> I wound one, and I'm literally sitting there, and Brian's trying to cheer me up, and I'm just thinking, and just stay in it, Aaron. Just stay in it. Yeah, I wounded one, and we can't find it, and, uh, I'm trying to stay as positive as I can because I'm not used to sucking. Um, not saying I suck, but I mean I suck. <laughs> I'm not used to missing anything, especially 
at this point with the compound, I had probably 20 bulls within range this morning. This morning alone, mind you. Plus a few other ones already that I haven't gotten shots at. and it's Just a different world with the old struggle stick. Don't just stay in it and keep going. And Brian's like, we'll get on another one. And I'm thinking, <laughs> this recurve is going to be the death of me. I've got to get my crap together with this thing. And then the mule deer, right? Completely different than the elk. Brian goes home to edit a bunch of video to take a day off. And I'm like, you know what? we got two days off. I'm going to go hunt deer. Yeah. Frank and I go in, and I get five feet from this deer and shoot it. So, which is great for a motivational booster, but it still doesn't tell me anything about my shooting ability for an animal at 20 yards because I shot it from half the distance for me to the camera. <laughs> and so I'm like, well. It says your stalking is, is on point, On right? point, yeah. I can sneak in with my socks on all 200 pounds of me. But, but this morning, I tell you, I felt so good when that bull came. Well, you know what else I also did? I tweaked with my bow, made it quieter. I think it was a lot quieter. Yeah. Um, course maybe that's because we're laying in front of a dead bull or sitting by a dead bull but i when we got back i tweaked with some stuff on the bow to make it quieter but when that bull came in i was doing this trying to find a hole thinking okay if he stops here and i found a good solid hole what was that in front of it five six feet yeah and, and i was watching i was on my back flat on my back and all i was looking at was the tip of aaron's arrow <laughs> and it was like this and this and then it was kind of shaking and then it went boom solid like a rock and i'm like Oh, oh, oh! And then he let it go. I was like, and it, and I heard that, and I saw that that the animal's horns just drop out of my view. I was like, oh my gosh, oh, oh yeah. my gosh! <laughs> it was, and when I, I mean, when I, yeah, the thing, you got there's so much stuff that goes through people's minds, and and you can act as hardcore as you want. It's hard to keep your crap together when an animal's coming in. It's even harder for me with only picking this up in January or whenever I picked up the recurve. To have the confidence that you have with the compound. Yeah. With the compound, I have total confidence. With this thing, I'm like, hey, yeah, maybe. <laughs> so I, I really, you know what I mean? I felt yeah. super confident when that bull came in. Now, keeping in mind, all this story happened in a total of five minutes. The bull coming in happened in 20 seconds. Yeah. Like, when Brian screamed at it, it was, I'm like, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And everything worked out perfect. When Brian got down, it was behind a tree. When I got ready, and then it crossed, and when you screamed that last time, because I I think I held that bow back for it was a long time. That's it was, why you could pull it back. I don't think it was at full draw. No, but it was pretty far back, three, and then three quarter draw probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I it, yeah, it was crazy. But when you, uh, yeah, when you, you know, what was going through your mind when you were at full draw? I mean, when he was coming in, like, what were you telling yourself? Don't like, cause you were, you look pretty nervous when he was, and then you like got, when he was first came solid. in, the first thing I was like, don't screw this up. You're not, you don't have another chance. Don't screw this up. And then he got to about 20 and you know, you're going through like, you got it. You got it. Cause, cause I was it. impressed that, cause you waited. Yeah. You waited a long time. Like you yeah. had your bow back and there were multiple shot opportunities and he just kept coming closer and closer. And from my perspective on the ground, you know, I just kept bugling at him, but I was watching you and I was thinking, he's going to get really close. And that, you, you know, how calm you were. You didn't yeah. just go and then just let her go at yeah. the most, you know, you didn't panic. Well, I have the thing I say in my mind, which normally works. It hasn't worked that great this elk season, but it works. And once I got, when he got within 20... And I started, when I went to full draw, because I stayed at full draw for probably 10 seconds. I think, yeah, probably 8 to 10. Yeah. Um, I was going, was going through my mantra, right? And I'm like, you know, lock it in, you know, whatever, saying my saying. And when he stopped, he turned his head and looked at Brian. And, and keep in mind, this is 12 yards. So I'm a bit worried he's going to see my fat head and blow too, right? But he didn't look at me at all. And Brian's only 5 feet from me, but 5 feet's enough. Yeah, he's focused here when you were just yep. down from me, and you're camoed up. You know, your face is all done up, and oh yeah, and I, you know, and I'm a, a big stickler for camo. Does it help? I'm gonna have to think it helped some this morning. My face wasn't gleaming white, but right when when he stopped, I just the last thing I thought was execute your shot, execute your shot, and pick a spot. And I pit, and it hit perfect right where I was aiming, and he just dropped. And then I'm like. 
Then I lost it, right? I'm like, did that just happen? Am I dreaming? The bull just hit the ground. And I look back at Brian, I'm like, well, I gotta go. Brian's like, get up there, shoot again, go again. And he's trying to grab the camera and I'm looking and the bull is doing kind of a death run down. And I did lose my crap a little bit there. I did not have perfect shot execution on the next shot because he's going through the trees and I'm trying to hit him, but I, I hit him on the next shot. And then just to, I put one in his heart just to, you know what I mean, finish the deal quickly. But last day, pressure's off, tagged out in Colorado with a stick. Elk steaks. This is going to feed the family for a year. Oh, yeah. And I've got some elk from last year. And Brian, since he got screwed because he had to follow my dumb <laughs> butt around calling for me, obviously, we're going to split the meat on this one. Um, but I tell you, I don't think people realize um, – the commitment it takes with the uh, uh, the stick bow as far as like I shot I've shot so much I have these crazy calluses on my finger I mean I shot every day and I over and over and over and I shot you know I have with the clums at Rocky Mountain those guys have been huge for helping me and you know filming me and, and my moral to, the moral to this story is this doesn't happen without a large amount of hard work not just the shooting the hunting I mean, you would not believe what we've went through to try and get this bull. And I've still screwed up some shots, but we made it happen today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just that's insane. Right. Yeah, I'm pumped. Yeah, so do you think you'll, I mean, are you addicted to the stick bow? Is I would not say I'm addicted to the stick bow. <laughs> a, lot, <laughs> he be, a lot of people are like, you're addicted now. And uh, we try to be as truthful as we can here on the Gritty Bowman. And I told Colt and Frank, I'm like, look, I need to fill out my tags this year so I can go back to the compound. <laughs> I was like, this is a lot of stress. And the, the thing is, is I hate wounding animals. And that is a difficult. And so I was pretty down in the dumps after well, and, the bull. And passing up shots that are like a 340 20 to bull. 30 yard shots. You're like, oh, I don't know. Yeah, screaming at me. And there's, there's a lot of schools of thought with this. It's like, hey, you, you earned it. And, you know, it's a complete... It is a completely different feeling for me taking something with the stick bow compared to the the compound. And so let's shake things, shake things up a bit. We still have a lot of hunts. We got Idaho. Yeah. We got BC. We got Alberta. We got grizzly um, and mule deer. Goat, mountain goat, and, 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 and go to Kansas, too, um, if I can even get myself to freeze in the tree stand. But it's like, in one way, I'm like, this thing's awesome. It is. It is, you are connected more than I've ever been not just to the bow, but also I'm, I'm struggle. Yeah, I mean, you, you you just you just have to. I mean, there's no way. To, there is just hard work, dedication, persistence to get get <laughs> stuff on the ground with a stick bow. Where with the compound, we w I would have been down the first three days. Yeah, I would have shot that mule deer the first. Yeah, day. no doubt. I mean, and it's forced you to like dig deep, be patient, patient. change your game a little bit. Oh, he's constantly, he's, he, I'll look back and he's kind of looking at me like, can you please <laughs> slow down? Because, I, I, I mean, Colton is worse than I am. But Colton, Colt likes to walk. But I can't talk too much crap because I am not too far behind Colton. I'm like a I'll go no quit guy too. Where Brian, but as you've shown though, like aggressiveness works too. Yeah. 100%. Well, a little bit of luck involved this morning. <laughs> because two ways to look at it. If we would have went at Brian's speed. We probably would have called it. They were all herded up right on the edge. Yeah. We probably would have called those elk in from right where they were at. Because I was like, I hit a branch when they when they made mm -hmm. a noise, and I remember heard that pop, and I heard stuff running. And it, it's not it's not like I could going slower. It would have just been a quieter <laughs> pop. Well, <laughs> anyway, Brian, if we would have went his route, I bet we would have called them in from there. We probably would have killed it. Well, instead, which is much more adventurous, which is why I like it, <laughs> I went in guns blazing, elk flying everywhere, and then we ended up making it happen anyway. But there's definitely times to be calm. And what the stick has taught me is there's a lot more. you got to be a lot calmer a lot more often. You know, this morning, I think where we, <clears throat> where we really made the right choice was we didn't give up. Yeah. You know, when those elk scattered... Instantly, I'm like, this is the only herd we know about. Yeah. The on only the bull we've, like, been able to, like... There's a spike a mile and a half away. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> what, otherwise, we have, like, combed this place. And we were like, so this was our last play. Yeah. And we have made an attempt on this. This is the fourth time we tried yeah. to kill this, this, this group, this bull. And... He barked at us the other night. 
Yep, came yeah. into like 100 yards and then burp. wind changed and he just, I checked the wind and I mean, literally I squeeze that thing and you hear burp, and I'm like, <laughs> right where the wind went Let's to. go have some ramen and <laughs> tuna now. That's yeah, over. <laughs> so when they all split up like that this morning, um, you know, we didn't panic and I felt the wind. We knew the wind was, didn't, they didn't smell us. Yeah. Flat out, they did not smell us. Nope. And so, as long as the elk don't smell you, you you still have a chance, even if they see you. Yep. And, and so, I don't think the bull ever saw us. His cows, no. that cow that was right over here, definitely saw us. Yeah. But I think that actually, in this case, helped because when that cow ran off, Brian bugled right after that, and I think that bull thought we were stealing his cow because he came in just like a book, just like you see in the movies. I mean, just like a yeah. hunting show. He came in. Well, when the cows went, when when one or two cows went that way, and I could hear him mewing over there, <clears throat> the bull was over there, and you could hear some cows over there, and then the, below us, we just came through the trees. Just, I mean, straight at him. Yeah. And then as soon as we got as far as we could go, we were right on top of that cow. You're like, get down, get down, get down. We hunkered down a little bit, and you're like, go for it, and yeah. <laughs> rah! And he just. Yep. So fast. Because in my mind, once I knew there was a cow below us, Brian said cows had split. In my mind, I'm thinking, we've split the cows. If this bull is here, he's coming now. I mean, we're 20 yards from a cow. And when I was bugling before, about 80 yards further back, yeah, he, did. <clears throat> he just stood there. Yep. 80 well, yards, he when, was just like... When I was looking in the binos, he was raking a tree when, when Brian bugled. And I'm like, that's when I went back. And I'm like, let's just walk up there. Because he didn't know... We were here, and what I was thinking was going to happen is we would get closer. Brian would go back in the timber, and I would shoot him somewhere down here coming to wind us. Yep. It didn't quite work out that way. I think we just got right <laughs> in his hip pocket so much, and then we were right next to his cows and the other cows. And when I was bugling before, I was sounding like a younger bull. I was kind of sounding like, you know, I had some cows, and there were cows around and stuff. And he was, and I was raking a tree a little bit, but I wasn't, like, overpowering. When we got over here, it was on like Donkey I was like, Kong. He's, and he just boom, that just lit him up. Oh yeah! And last last night, last, yesterday afternoon, we got into another bull, and uh, and Brian did the full charge him, let's go, because I mean we're like last minute. <laughs> and I'm a, I'm feeling aggressive last night. I'm like it's time to sound like a Tyrannosaurus Rex, right? Like <laughs> that bull didn't want none. He was like <laughs> he ooh. ran up yeah. the mountain. <laughs> 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 He's, you got much more like timid. Don't hurt me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Brian was like, I may have wanted to lure him in with cow calls. And I was like, yeah, I don't think he, he was probably just a three by three or a four by four, just kind of figuring things out. But either way, it's uh, I can't thank you enough. This has been uh, an epic adventure. And uh, so let's so thank all the people that support us, not not just the uh, the companies. Obviously, that's huge. You know, great gear, but also the uh, just the people that constantly you know, hop on and say, hey, you're going to get it done. Stay at it. You know, we have a lot of support, and that's great. A lot of funny people out there that are fans of the Gritty Bowman because oh, yeah. their comments uh, to keep us motivated and the jokes are just uh, top of the line. Oh, yeah, yeah. We've got some other – somebody <laughs> – I believe Brian – people don't realize Brian has hunted in a tree stand more than most humans. <laughs> we, we got some tree stand tutorial yesterday, which was good, um, although – it get made for good conversation Although, the, on the walk back to camp. The tree stand, though, was your idea, not mine. Yeah, I was. Everybody was like, "What did the one guy say? Don't sell out, dude." And I'm thinking, I hung these in July, man. Like, I don't care. I'm not. I mean, I think people have a false idea that I, I'm just a mountain hunter, which I am a mountain hunter. Yeah. Meaning, but I'm gonna do what it takes, guy. We packed these tree stands in four miles. We knew the season started early this year. We thought it might be hot, which it wasn't. But the idea was. Set them up over wallows. Well, the reason why we set on this one, the wallow had been hit. We couldn't find an elk, right? We couldn't find, the wind has been bad. We couldn't find an elk. So Brian was like, you know, that tree stand, what do you think? And I'm like, hell yeah, let's go sit in the tree stand, definitely. It, and it had it been three hit. Days row. Yeah. Yep. We had stuff on the game camera. Big bear. Oh, yeah. Huge bear. I guess I'm not tagged out in Colorado yet because <laughs> I got a bear tag, but I, it's okay. 
<laughs> um, but yeah, so we sat in that tree stand, which I was all for. I mean, I, I want to get something on the ground, whether it's tree stand, spot stock, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just turned out this morning we did it the way that I like to do it. You do is on the ground. So. Yep. Called them in. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well. Nice job, brother. Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> oh Lord. Stay gritty. Stay gritty. <laughs> Okay, Gritty friends, I hope you enjoyed that podcast. If you did, please take a moment to leave us a review on iTunes, Podbean, or Stitcher. We love reading your reviews. And connect with us on social media if you're on there. Look us up on Facebook and Instagram, and take a moment to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can receive notifications when we upload new videos. We've got a sweet deal with Mountain Ops. You get 20% off on all Mountain Ops supplements, combo packs, and apparel when you type in the word gritty at checkout. If you're a hardcore elk hunter or you want to be, go to the Elk 101 website online and check them out. Our friend Corey Jacobson is killing it with some of the best elk hunting information and entertainment on the web. All right, friends, let me leave you with one other quote from Theodore Roosevelt who said, It behooves every man to remember that the work of the critic is of altogether secondary importance. And that, in the end, progress is accomplished by the man who does things. We all have a choice. We can be people who do things or people who criticize the work of others. It's pretty simple, really. Get out there and do your thing. Good luck on your hunts and stay gritty. This is Ty Stubblefield and you're listening to the Gritty Bowman. Gritty. Bull man. <laughs>